confessions. I'm trying to teach them all lessons. Yeah. Whoa. Hoop dreams trying to make yo, yo, it to the welcome league. to this I'm week's episode of Hardwood Confession, your weekly hoop confession where we have hoopers and sports industry professionals alike to speak their truth about basketball. My name is Tay, I'm your host, and we got a very special guest today, uh, Mr. JD, Justin Dittman. You know, uh, look, we, we gonna get right into it, but first let me ask, how you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good, man. Just up living, you know, staying healthy away from all this, this virus and stuff, you know. Right, right. I feel that. So look, you know, I, I want to I want to do this at the top of the show because I want to kill all the noise. You know, we saw a couple summers ago James Harden was going to integrate a sidestep last year, and, and in the bubble we all saw Joker uh, Djokovic do the do the strong lay sidestep. I call it the JD sidestep. He the CEO of the move, man. Let's let's set this straight right now. I want to say I saw you first. I've I've, I've seen you. Uh, we first uh, met was what. 2015, I think, or something 14, like that. 14, yeah. it was in, uh, in, in Chindown. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where you want to try? Yeah, where you man, I've been doing that move, man, since 2011. And it just started getting courted on film, like, right to 2012. Um, I started doing it because, you know, playing against taller guys, it was hard for me right. to get my shot off. So this was, allowed me to get my shot off and, and right. actually made the sidestep a quicker shot. Instead right. of putting your your your, your 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 second foot down, you lift it up, man, just shoot off the one. It's a quicker shot. So I created it. I mean, you know, thanks to them for, you know, making it more yeah. famous than it is. Right. Of course, they don't put a name on it because, you know, they're, they're on TV a lot in the NBA. So everybody's right. like, oh, that's their shot. I'm the creator. Um, yeah. Again, I see a lot to those look. guys who even, you know, throwing oh, it man. into their game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But look, look, my man's got his own logo. And uh, and he has his own socks. And, and what do you think it is? It's that sidestep. So we're going to go ahead and crown you the, the CEO and pioneer of that move. And, um, you know, and, and, and to your point about having it a quicker shot, we've we seen recently, probably the last three, four years, where guys are driving and jumping off the off, off leg just to throw off the, the defender coming to block his shot. Right. People understand that you shoot off the same leg, same hand. It's, most people yeah. are going to guard you as right hand guys. So they're right. going to test the hand. You move this way. You got a clear shot at the basket, so right. it just yeah. takes repetition, man. You, yeah, yeah. You know, you work, I work on it with more. I work on it in break centers when I'm playing against, you know, uh, um, guys that aren't quite on my level. They just think. I mean, they, they compete against me. They right. help me out, but I work on it more on my moves and, and you know, yeah. like time fitness and twenty fours. Right, right, right. So you had mentioned you had mentioned earlier about the move started in two thousand eleven. Um, I'm I'm assuming you you hit the league uh, the, the G leagues on in a surprise fashion in 2012 where you got a chance to win a championship and you were crowned MVP as well. Um, so I know you took a lead by storm, you know, on that year, and then you were able to get a couple championships like we had mentioned in in China where I was there to witness that in the CBA, and then I believe in in Lithuania you got another one right. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah, so you three time champion. I hope I didn't miss one out. Um, You've been blessed to travel the world and 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 see all different type of places and 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 hoop at the highest level. Um, there was what I think you were like the lead scorer in Israel as well. Uh, and yeah, man, you know, I've been bouncing around. Man. These yeah. I've been lead scorer in a lot of places, just they don't show it. And I think that after my championship in the G League, I actually been in a lot of different championships. I just had not run. I was second place mm-hmm. in a lot, like in Italy. I was second place in Italy. I yeah. was second place in DR. You know, I was second place in a lot of places and right. just couldn't get over that hump. Yeah. Um, but I had an outstanding career, man. I don't take nothing from it. I just wish that I never would have got hurt back in 2018. Mm. Oh, I was yeah. on my way back to the league then. So, right. it happens. Yeah, yeah. So, with, with all that being said, man, like, where, where was the introduction from? Who, who introduced you to, to basketball? Um, Man, I don't know. I think it's just probably from watching Chicago Bulls games when I was younger. Because – that was kind of the only thing on, you know, being from Southern Illinois. We watched a lot of Chicago Bulls games. For sure. Um, not having that much, not having cable at the time. We used to use the antenna. Uh, people don't, you know, that's how yeah. we use the antenna. Right. So we <laughs> stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I used to watch Jordan a lot. Uh, I think that, you know, kids playing ball around the neighborhood, just, it kind of just, it's, it was installed in me from a young age, from family being, around the game a lot and my cousins, you know, been, so we just used to compete a lot. So yeah, yeah. he's always been around. So I, I would say watch Chicago Bulls games and then just, you know, fall in love with it with all the kids being playing around it and playing it 
Right, right, right. So it was, it was, it was culture for you, yeah. Just to yeah, yeah. Because we used to put milk carton. You know, we used to cut the holes in them and put right. them on our um, on our uh, power line. Sometimes we'd put them on our uh, our clothes line, put it up yeah. the end of the pole, and we'd tie it up. And we'd play full court right in there. Cut the lines down, play full court. It used to be so much mud. So yeah, the love of the game started on crates. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you just a natural scorer and very crafty, because mm-hmm. you know, you're yeah, the, the, the beginnings of where you had to get, you know, get your buckets, you know, wasn't in a traditional fashion. So that makes sense, bro. That makes sense. Right, it's but the, everybody I used to get criticized though. I used to get criticized for being an undersized point guard at the, you right. know, at a young age. You know, you'd never be uh, uh, a scorer or a shooting guard at that size. You gotta be a PG a playmaker. Right. And so you were able to, yeah, you were able I to. I had to change my game a little bit, just depending on the team I'm on at the depth. Right. You know, eventually I grew a little tall. I used to be the smallest kid on the team. I grew yeah, a little yeah. tall. I'm standing six feet. Some might say shorter, but I'm six feet. <laughs> right, right. right. So, 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 so with all that being said, talk about what, what was it, what was the high school experience like for you uh, in Southern Chicago and then, uh, or Southern Illinois, rather, sorry. Yeah. And then, um, and then transition into University of Washington where you, where you played your uh, collegiate career. So in high school, it was, it was pretty uh, much all the kids I grew up with. We all just kind of molded up into this powerhouse team. We was ranked fourth in the mm-hmm. state, uh, top 50 in the country because we was that good. Yeah. But I got offered to go to um, Oak Hill Academy and turn it down because mm. I want to finish out with my, my guys. You know, I didn't want to leave. Right, and have to restart over with a bunch of strangers. Even yeah. though that program is amazing, right? For I sure. just want to finish it out with my guys. We, you know, we finished fourth in state. You know, we got put out by uh, Sean Livingston. Them, um, I eventually uh, committed to Illinois State at first. Okay, you know, and I was gonna go to Illinois State first, and you know, I went there because they just showed so much love when I went on that visit. So I was like, yeah, I think this is where I want to be. But then right. prep school came around. They called, and I went opt out of that. Because once I said I was going to prep school, all these other schools start hitting me. Yeah, yeah. The Utahs, the Miami, the Illinois, all of them started hitting me up. So it was just like, yeah, I don't know. I want, I want to leave home. I want to be somewhere else. So right. prep school helped me uh, prepare for being away from home. Yeah. Um, got us some, some stuff there. We was the number two team. And then a scandal happened where half our team got into like a, a charge with rape. Thank oh, God wow. that I was playing video games because, you know, one of my guys was playing video games with me. He poked his head in there, and he got charged just by looking no, in the room. No, so man. I'm like, man, I'm you know that's why people are like, why you play games all the time? Because it saved me from being in trouble. Yeah. You know? So yeah. that happened, and then University of Washington came around. They could actually just like hard on me. Really? They visited me, you know, while I was at prep school. They came, they even came home visit. They did. They just recruited me hard. I wonder why. Is because they was at St. Louis first and got the head coach Walmart got the head coaching job. Mm. So he recruited me in there. When I went out there, man, I told myself I wasn't gonna commit on that visit, but they they made me commit. Yeah, I went yeah. out there, they had a real playing a game on uh, USC. It was like forty thousand fans, bro. When I went through that tunnel, the whole crowd was chanting my name. Justin uh, did, man. I said, I'm coming. You I'm come coming. In. Yeah, I'm right. coming. And then this time I had braids, I wasn't sure if I wanted to cut my braids or not. And you know they ain't loud braids. They ain't want braids on me. You know, so I'm like, I don't know who I'm coming to. Because I, yeah. I, I was thinking of Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson was a cultural pop, you know, pop star. Right. Right. I want to be like Allen. Yeah. So I, had to, I had to make a you know a personal decision, and uh, that's why I went there and uh, changed my whole you know. Yeah. Career, yeah. You know. So, and and then you didn't you didn't waste no time, man. You freshman year, you were all freshmen and uh, yeah, made, man. Made a big splash. That credit to Brandon Bobby Jones. Uh, Jamal Williams, Mike Jensen, all those older guys that helped me on uh, my freshman year. You, know, they you said Brandon who? Brandon Roy. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, to me, Hall of Fame. But right, for sure. Made, they Not made that. it easy for me. You know, everybody had their own roles. Brandon had his role. He, uh, to me, Brandon was a two-way in college. Right. He locked people up, scored. He made me look good as a point guard. Facilitate. Yeah. So I had to learn that I'm not the score no more. The main score I have to – find my guys, and then once I did that, it made me look good, so. Right. Um, credit to those guys. I should have left that year. Yeah, I was my draft, too, and I, I did. I was like, you got Spencer Haas coming in, number one big man in Mace. We about to win a national championship. Right, right. Didn't happen. Had a couple down years, and, you know, they pointed fingers at me because I was supposed to be the um, Pac-10 player of the year that year, and I did. Right. So, 
But I mean, look, you went you went twenty six and seven one you know that year, and and yeah. went to the Sweet Sixteen and made a little bit of history at the time. So I mean, it definitely was worth. I mean, you guys seemed like you had the team to 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 make it happen. Just fell a little short. I mean, not everybody can say, you know, that you're right. in the Sweet Sixteen. So. You know what I mean? Really? I beat, but we beat Illinois. You know, uh, really recruited me in yeah. my, uh, you know, my freshman year in the uh, to get to the Sweet Sixteen. So that was really a oh, surreal moment. Sweet. Playing against guys I grew up playing against. So yeah, that was good, man. And then you know, eventually, uh, my senior year, I played. I had a great senior year. I mean, Isaiah was one, um, two of the back best backcourt in the nation. Uh, I thought I was gonna get drafted. Portland said they was gonna draft me, but they say only if Patty Mills gets selected early. Mm. He didn't, so they took him. So I was left undrafted, and I had to work my way up. Yeah, yeah. which kind of defined, kind of defined your career, man. And, and right, that's why I said I'm an underdog. That's why I tell people I'm an underdog. I know you know. Yeah, I had to work to yeah. get where I'm at. You know, and I get guys all the time like, yeah, I'm trying to get where you are. I say your story is different. Yeah, you know I mean your story might be better than mine. You just gotta start somewhere and just build on it. For sure, for sure. So you got a chance to play with. All type of guys that played in the league at, at all at, type at, of them, right? man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so, Isaiah, yeah. Brandon, um, Bobby Jones, Quincy Pondexter, uh, who else? Bob, John Brockman, Special Haas. Um, and then young guys came in after me. Then yeah. after that, it was like they was getting lottery picks every year after that. Every year, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a good experience, man. I had I had a great college experience, man. I still keep in contact with some guys. Where some guys, you know, they moved on with their lives. Right. Some of them done basketball and starting other things. So that's what's good. up. Hey, I'm gonna ride to the wheels fall off. Hey, hey, hey well, you, your wheels are still they still fresh, baby. So keep right. keep keep them things spinning. But so that's gonna lead me and lead us into uh, here at Harbor Confession. We have a segment called Hooper's Confessional, um, and. We got a new sponsor that's going to sponsor this uh, Raz Energy Drink or Raise. I'm sorry. Oh, and, that's um, sick. Yeah, yeah. So you can get a 15% discount uh, with the promo code. It's Hardwood Confession. It'll be HWC15. You get 15% off um, on your order when you click on the link in the description below. And so, look, I'm going to ask you a couple questions and, um, and give you a chance to speak your truth. But I'm going to start off with this one, J.D. Um, with all that being said, we just talked about, you know, playing internationally, uh, NBA, G League. Uh, college, you know, what, what is, what is the basketball? What, is, what does that mean to you as, as it pertains to your career from your childhood experience all the way up to now? Basketball to me, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's short. Basketball is life, bro. Yeah. I feel like um, without basketball, bro, I would have never seen the place I've seen, met the people I met, you know, built the relationships I've built, you know? So I think that, through, through basketball and in any sport in general, um, you can do things you never thought you would ever do. Now, I've right. never had on my bucket list, I'd be on the Great Wall of China or in Paris or, you know what I mean, right. in London somewhere. So it's basketball to me, it's, 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 a, it's a way of life, man. And it's, it's something that can be, you know, life changing. Yeah. Um, like I said, it changed my life and it still changed people's life because. Uh, right now it's changing my life and it's changing other people's life that are watching me and I'm motivating other people. So right. uh, it's, it's, it's a motivating tool, man. I think it's like that ball is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. And yeah, that, that China experience, I'm going to bring that up because I was out there and I got to see you guys win that championship and I, I, obviously I didn't play, but man, well, I, I think like that was the most dominant team ever in China. I don't think there was a team that ever. we was too dominant, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, that was crazy. And, and, Nobody thought y'all was going to do it either. You know, between you, Mike, and Hadadi, you know, it was just like, no. But don't, nobody knew that that first series. So in the championship series, we lost to Lester Hudson. Lester was winning. Mm -hmm. right? We yeah. went to the coach the next day. It was like, hey, we want to do scout. So they let us do scout. We was like, you know mm -hmm. what? We're going to trap Lester off the left hand because he loved pulling up off the left hand. And right. we gonna, uh, when he go right, we're going to send him to Hadadi. Mm -hmm. Changed the whole game. He couldn't do nothing. He was frustrated. And yeah. we swept the series. We won every game after that. Yep. You know what I mean? So it was just us coming together as leaders. It was like, you know, let's take this in our hands. We ain't losing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was amazing. That was a memory, bro. You know, you used to have the battles on the 2K. That was crazy. <laughs> you know, <the laughs> that was crazy. So, I won't say yeah. nothing. I won't say nothing, but you know. <laughs> I'm too tough. I'm too tough. I'm too tough. Hey, but one on one. one. Almost got one. Mike sent yeah. me a video, man. In fact. Did he show the uh, the standings of uh, 
how the who was winning, who wasn't losing. You know, Junior's yeah. man, Julius is man. They all in. <laughs> Yeah, those are good times, man. Good times, but yeah, yeah. So let me so let me ask you. You know, you 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 got a chance to um, you know, after your your stellar season at at the G League level, um, 2011, 2012. Um, like I said before, win an MVP, win a championship. Um, you got a chance to play in the NBA, which is amazing, right? Talk talk about that. You played with the with the Spurs, I believe, right? Uh, yes. Sir. That, that what was, was that experience like? I was nervous. You know, I was walking in the gym too. I was like, I'm about to bust these guys' butt today. Cause we used to play, right. we were playing two falls. I'm like, I'm about to bust them. You know what I mean? And so before I got there, they was like, yo, you've been called up since first. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll cook for them. Yeah, yeah. Got called, I'm like, whoop. So I'm like, oh, that's dope. Call my mom, she crying and everything. Yeah. I'm like, mom, I ain't, I ain't make it yet. I gotta prove to these people to, to sign me. So right. I went up there and the first game we played against um, the Hornets, and they was like, hey, you suiting up, be ready, cause um, you backing up uh, Tony. Yeah. Like, okay, so all the nervousness went out the door. I knew I was playing, I'm, I'm good. You yeah. know what I mean? It's always nervous when you don't know if you're playing, but I knew I was playing. I got in, I got a charge. My first bucket was a goal team. Mm. I went up trying to lay it up, do goal team to my shot. So yeah. that's how I was introduced to the NBA. And I was like, after nice. that, it was like, I belong here, bro. I don't I don't belong nowhere else. So right. when I got went back to the G League, I was playing at a different speed than everybody. Yeah. Of what I took mm-hmm. from the NBA. Right. Everybody in the NBA is good, bro. Yeah. It's like it's, it's slow. Everything's so slow. It might look fast on, on, on TV, bro. Yeah. It's slow. And I'm mm-hmm. like, man, if anybody had the opportunity, they can play at this level. They just gotta manage it right. They gotta do all the right things, man, whether they're doing a social media, be a good player in the locker room. And yeah. then when they get on the court, make the most of it. So yeah. that's what I try, you know, you know, uh, Gary Neal came back off the injury, so they sent me back down, and that's what Toronto called. And I thought I was going to stick with Toronto. You know, yeah. I was playing the most minutes. I, me and um, Ben Uzo at the time was competing for that spot. And they were just like, they was like, oh, this guy, who do you think he is? Uh, coming for thinking all that. I said, bro, I just wanted treatment. They, right. So I, what I got from it was I wasn't supposed to get treatment because I'm a rookie. You know, you're not supposed to get this. So, right. You know, I want to be healthy so I can perform. Right, you know, right. So, it was that that team was tough because uh, there wasn't no leadership. I thought it was a lot of young guys. I think that's mm-hmm. what the mark is just his second year in the league, and other guys were just getting in. Right. So I'm like, wasn't really much leadership on there. We just, you know, we just out there hoop. Yeah, yeah. And the following year, uh, got uh, got traded to back to the, the Texas Legends, and I got caught up on the Mavs. Mm-hmm. The Mavs, I love the organization. The atmosphere there was amazing. I just felt like it was a reward. wasn't really trying to get me in to see if I'm gonna feel the team. And yeah, you know, I took it for what it was. Thank you for you know the opportunity. Went back to the G League. It was like I don't belong here, so I murdered the right. G League again. So. Yeah. Um. So I mean, the NBA, like I said, everybody owe it to themselves. If you never played the G League, play in the G League, man. It you got that NBA feel. You never know. You might get lucky, get called up, right. and, you know, fulfill a dream. Um. So I mean, I fulfill a dream. I was one of the top players in the world at you know the times and I, yeah, yeah. I'm learning with that. And to me I still feel like I'm I'm a top player somewhere, whether it's here, Europe, somewhere. I just it just sucks that they look at age and not performance. Right, right. right. So that that that's exactly that. Yeah, and I and I and I got a I got a follow up, you know, question to that. You know, I wanna <clears throat> but I do want to make a, a statement though that that I got a chance to see you what last year or two years uh, in the Philippines, uh, was it Jordan national team yeah, you got to play Jordan, for? Right? Yeah. Like, you know, I was like, whoa, that's cr- that's crazy. I'm in the Philippines, and I'm like, yo. Right. Small world, right? Small world. I'm like, there's no <laughs> way. There's no yeah. way if I got JDs in the Philippines playing playing against, you know, g Filipinos with the Jordan national team. Uh, but, yeah, I just want to throw that out there. So, with that being said, like, what was a memorable moment, whether it's international, you know, in the FIBA circuit or – or in the NBA, what was a memorable moment that you were just like, wow, or was it, you know, maybe your first time stepping on NBA court? Getting called up was the most memorable moment. Like, that, I'll never mm-hmm. forget that. That was really the most memorable because it's like, man, they really see my work ethic. They see my hard work. And they right. finally started to take notice. Because I always told that you got to be this playmaker. I said, so, okay, but when you look at the newspapers, when we used to look at the newspaper, or you look at the box score, you're not looking at, is he being a playmaker? You're looking at who's getting buckets, what numbers right. are like. For sure. So I'm like, that's the only way they was going to notice me, so I had to make noise that way. Yeah. And then once I got to the NBA, I was like, I can be a facilitator. But right. then at the same time, nobody can lead me over like I'm a sub chunk. 
thinking yeah. I can't score. So, uh, yeah, the NBA was the most memorable. And then overseas, of course, you know, the first championship was my Lithuania. That was amazing. Being that, that really, my career took off in Lithuania. Yeah. Because I was the only American. They had, you know, restrictions because the year before the owner had left and left them in debt. So the, the, the league had put a restricted on you know, yeah. one American. So I got in only American on a Euro League team playing against <laughs> top, you know, so I went crazy. And that's when yeah. my, I started to take off. But, but yeah, that, that NBA call up. Was, yeah, and I, I actually got a chance to see that video where they went crazy. I, I think when you went back the following year, some years later, yeah. they what you love. Like, so much love, crazy. bro. You know what I mean? So it was I love, Chris, right? Zyra, I, I mean, I, that's always be home for me. Yeah. I love Zyra City. The fans are amazing. The the staff are amazing. The players still the, still play there. Amazing guys, man. I, like I said, they offer me. I go right back. Yep. I retired there. Yeah. If I could. I, I retired. Even if I sign a one day contract, I retired there because I want to. That's that was when my my career took off. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. So um, let me ask another question. Um, you know, with you being a point guard, you, you had mentioned earlier. Um how, you know, you had to overcome that, right, of being a, a pass first or, or not a scorer, you know, and being a facilitator in a sense. Um, can, you, can you speak to a false reality of that, you know, um, to where, you know, you kind of were able to feed dots? Because, you know, they always say a, a guard is a dime a dozen, right? Yeah. And, you know, right. Loki just, you just understand. Right. Like, guards, we are a dime a dozen, but a lot of guards can't, don't know how to win. Yeah. Like, you can find guards that can be playmakers. You can find guards that can score the ball, but you can't find guards that can do both. Once yeah. you can find somebody that can do both, it changed the whole dynamic of your team. You know what I mean? Like me, I always preach, uh, even when teams like turn me down, like, all right, they don't want to win. I'm yeah. a winner. If you look at my track record, I win. I'm in the playoffs everywhere I go. So I'm a winner. Right. So yeah. I think that with the, the league changing now, like you think about now, every point guard now is a combo guard or they got another point guard playing aside than like Toronto right. or Lowry and um, yeah. Buddy. Yeah. Name, uh, yeah. Van Lee. Yeah. They they are a good combination together. Two right. point guards playing together. And mm -hmm. you see how that's how everybody's starting to do that. I think everybody yeah. really copying the Warriors. That's true. Warriors that's true. Warriors Portland got it. Okay. You know what so it last year. Everybody's a combo scoring that can make plays. And mm -hmm. I think that if you can have one that had both, it's dumb. So um I don't think nobody's gonna argue no more now. Like, oh, you mean a playmaker? No, no, you don't. You need right. somebody who can do both, who can yeah. set up guys and make that open shot and be solid on defense. Yeah, right. so that's that's the new that's the new way. Right, right, right. And so yeah, I, I, yeah, definitely that. I mean, there's a bunch of teams in the NBA that that have that same dynamic. And so uh, yeah, that's that's interesting to speak to. But we're gonna go ahead and conclude that segment. I appreciate that. Um, so you you last played in Denmark, um, and then you got a chance to play in the in the the basketball tournament TBT um this past summer uh in the bubble so that was cool to see i got a chance to see you play again so that was awesome um but what what you know what, what's next for for jd what's next for uh for justin Dimon? man what's next is whatever opportunity wherever i'm wanted that's what i'm yeah. gonna go i think that yeah. again people use an age as a downer you yeah. know what i mean but they don't look at your success the year before or prior and, and that hurts a lot of guys to stay at the hoop. There's a lot of us still out here. A lot of yeah. great players like myself. You got Cargo, sure. you have uh, Bobby Brown. You have you have all these guys that are around the same age, and they keep saying age, age. No, that's nothing. We still come in hoop, man. We still right. come in and ball out. So, man, I'm I'm just waiting. Like that's why I, was, I say I'm doing weights four times a week. I'm hooping three times a week, and I'm just yeah. staying ready for whatever's next. You know, and they always ask like, is he in shape? Great shape. <laughs> you know I'm in great shape. And yeah. Some people thought I wouldn't come back from my injury. Yeah. I'm in great shape, man. So, um, whether it's playing overseas or whether it's you know still you know getting my my gym together with my my uh, my Denver center back in Illinois, you know I'm trying to okay. help with, you know get that together for make it a hub for anything indoor sports, even outdoor sports. I'm trying to get right. indoor flag football stuff like that. So it's just the pandemic hurting everything. Our government right. shutting everything down. So, yeah. Um, so I would just say yeah, whatever next is. The next team to call, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Go back to my demo center and train. I'm just doing that too. Just, I'm just going to ride and see what, what else is happening. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, look, you know, before, before we conclude this, um, this week's episode, let me ask you one question. Um, if we were to retire your number, I'm sorry, retire your jersey today, what would the number be on the back? And what's a nickname or either self-proclaimed or that was given to you or maybe a mantra that you would have on the jersey? My number would be number 55. Um, 
I always wanted number 55 just because Jason Williams. I, I love Jason Height. Yeah. He electrified the crowd. Um, played nothing alike, by the way. Yeah. Uh, because that was my first uh, number. I won a championship in, in the millennium, 55. Mm-hmm. In the back of the jersey, it'd be JD One Leg or Mr. Logo, you know, because of my, my side step. So it had to right. be either JD One Leg or Mr. Logo. Um, I got both of those names given to me. Mr. Yeah. Logo was in uh, Orlando when I hit the buzzer off the side step. Off the side you step, know, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, one of my mans was like, Mr. Logo. Call right. Me that. JD One Leg has always been like that when people start seeing that video, which it started on video in, um, in the San Francisco Pro Am. They saw it. So. Right, right, right. One of those two names, man. Um, you know, hang them up and I'm, uh, I'm just sit back and just glance at them now and then. Right, right. Yeah, that's what's well, up. I'm going to start teaching it, but I don't think they're ready for it. No, nah, I don't think they're ready. I don't think they're ready. <laughs> hey, you know, look, look. You know, I, I hoop a little bit myself when I got out there trying to do that side step. Yeah, and you know, it, it takes some work. It's tough, man. You can't just do it. <laughs> you just nah, can't do you it. Gotta, you can't. You got to do yeah. it, and you got to shoot your same shot. You can't change up the shot. You know? Right. Yeah, so it's, it's a little tough. But I'm going to make sure for those that are watching, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put that video up of that Orlando shot. Uh, it's one of my favorite yeah. game winners. <laughs> And it was on ESPN. I, I'll never forget that because I was like, "Yo, my boy just flashed one." But, but yeah. So, JD, yo, it was it was great catching up with you, man. Uh, appreciate you getting on. Um, yeah. Always a pleasure, man. And I'm uh, I'm gonna put your social media up on there too, so for those that are watching, you know, can um, can see what you know what you're gonna do next, man. And I, I wish you nothing but best. And um, hope everything works out coming out of COVID, man. And appreciate you, know, you, man. Thanks for having me, man. I yeah. appreciate this, man. For sure, Thank for you. sure. Yeah, yeah. So look, this will this will conclude this week's episode of Harbor Confessions. And if you're listening um, and watching on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or iHeartRadio, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and get that notification bell so you can get uh, notified of next week's episode of Harbor Confessions. Again, my name is Tay. I'm your host, and we're out. and I'm full court pressing. That's a hard work confession. Here comes Chicago, 17 seconds, 17 seconds from game seven or from championship number six.